to take you through code cracking. So what we do is we ask the teams to collect what we call nuggets. Now nuggets are intriguing bits of data, connections, things that make things sense, things that don't make sense, uh, things that we hear. You are you are listening for interesting thoughts, interesting connects. That's the one side of it. The other side of it is things that you are associating to or, or making connections to, much like your internet listening pads, that you're making connection, connections to on what you're hearing. Oh, this is also making me think of this. This is also making me think of that. So we're going to be watching some stimulus. So the things that you're going to do on these blue cards are write down with your, with your, um, with your Sharpie pens the two, the two different things. They're going to be things that you are hearing and connecting to in terms of what people are saying. Um, the intriguing bits of piece, those intriguing things. The other side of it are going to be other connections that you make which are not necessarily completely related to what, it, what they're saying, but other connections that you're making or other stimulus or other thoughts and ideas that you are having around um, the stimulus piece that you hear. So stuff that they're being said, interesting facts, stuff that doesn't really make sense to you, stuff that you are connecting to, all those kinds of things, and then anything else that your mind is throwing out you, out at you in relation or as a connection with the material. So you're going to write those as statements on these cards. So what we're going to do then is take all of those, and you'll throw down one of them. I'm just going to show you the, just in the nutshell, the, the process. You're going to throw down one of these ideas, and then in a group, you're going to start to think and start to make connections to what else this statement could mean. Now this isn't necessarily in the context of that, it's just if you looked at that statement, so we had one that we always show as an example which is, uh, and it might, it may even be in the, in the things, which is uh, the statement that uh, milk is high in fat. That was just something that came from when we were working on a dairy project. Milk is high in fat. Now what else could that mean? So if I say milk is high in fat, what's the first things that come to mind if I say a statement like that? Ice cream is not healthy. Ice cream is not healthy. That drinking it will make you fat. Drinking it will make you fat. It's delicious. It's delicious. It's thick. <laughs> it's thick. Creamy. Creamy. Now think about other connections even outside of. So milk will make you fat. Think of outside of dairy. What else are you connected to? If I say milk will make you fat, what other ice associations? Cream. Ice cream. What else is other associations is it you connect to? Heart disease. Heart disease. Yeah, illness. Illnesses. Obesity. Obesity. Great. The biggest loser. The biggest loser. So what happens is if you throw down a statement like this and then you start to build expansions around it. We shuffle all of those things back together again. And then what we do is we start to throw these. Say we first throw down three. We start to read these three statements. And we start to see what connects these three things together. So if I th threw down three things like um, heart disease is the number one killer in America. Um, it is. I like, I like robots. Milk, milk is high in fat. Um, running shoes are awesome. Say so just random statements like that. We want to start figuring out, okay, what's behind this? What's the th what do you think the thought is? Or what's the thread? Or what's the theme? Or what's the thing that's coming up? That robots goes? that can run will eventually replace human beings who cannot. And they'll okay. get fat if they don't. <laughs> so I would say I would say hey, that's a good start, and then and then start challenging even what's behind that. So what's behind these things? And what ends up happening is we may throw down a couple more, and you start to basically code crack a little bit. What's going on with each of these statements, and how are they starting to combine together? We then create what we call an outside statement. And we often start it with language like, it seems, do you have an, another way that you like to say it? Yeah, I don't use that language, but um, just, just basically... <coughs> Whatever the statement is. The declarative is. thing about, about that starts with, sort of, here's a statement about... So that's optional. Connected. That's optional because we write our cards a little differently. So you're going from stimulus, we make single nuggets, we're going to expand on those, we're going to force connect those, we're going to write those into outside statements, and outside is exactly like that. Um, in the future, robots will be running with shoes and not drinking milk, I don't know. We create a couple of these, and again, for lack of better, it seems, these will be outsides. 
Um, so this is our mega phase. This is what we call expansion. That's outside, and then we'll get to inside. So the thing here is that you'll be looking for themes and things that are kind of going on. Oh, there okay. seems to be an understanding. There's something in here about technology will replace, or you know, people are moving away from milk. They're taking to other types of foods, whatever those types of states. Yes. It's usually coming from the stimulus here. You're looking for the themes and the patterns that come out of this. Uh -huh. The outside is often people just land there. They think that this is the inside. This is, oh, okay, we've got a theme. Now here's kind of like our hypotheses about what's going on in here. For us, we want to take that another step further, or we do take that another step further. We start looking at these, and you want to start looking at the patterns that bring these together. Now, why? The biggest thing here is that you're looking for context. And that context is the why, why, why. That's literally, you just keep asking yourself why. If you've got yourself a question, or at least if you have yourself a statement, you can say, okay, now what's behind that statement? And what's behind that? So, so if you take them for lack of a better example, you're saying the population of lies is 300 million, or, and then you'd say, well, why is that? What's behind that? And then you'll start to get into some more data. And you may come up, well, that's because, uh, you know, procreation is this, or, you know, um, there's this huge love movement on the planet. Well, why? So as you start to unpack, you're getting deeper behind those things. The <clears throat> when we get to the inside part, so from outside, after asking why, 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 you'll start to get this. Now think about this, that apple idea, right? There's lots of different stimulus. You're breaking that down. You're almost kind of working this backwards. What you're looking for out of these is that almost like almost that, uh, that aha. And the way that we do that is that that's how we end up with an insight. And this is um, the way we often write these is that we can say people or whoever the consumer is. And this particular is people want, need, or believe. But most of the time it's um, so I, but we tend to push it towards white. They want, need, and believe, and desire in the context of time, space, and mood. So when you write a definitive statement, like an inside statement, one of the things to think about here is that when is it happening, where is it happening, and how, how, what is the emotional quality of what is going on for that consumer, or for that person, or for the context. And that's how we write out our